Jordan, we are... Sorry, Jordan. Yeah, we forgot to turn on the wide cam. So it wasn't me, Jordan. It was all me. It's all my fault. I'm Fucked up. technically inept, so it can't be my fault. Cheers. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Love that. I don't mind that at all. Yeah. Welcome everybody to the So You Wanna Get Fat podcast. I am not your typical chef, Brian Sow, and I got my buddy here. Your good looking sidekick, Frenchie Paul the Animal. The Animal! <laughs> and where are we coming? Where are we coming from right now? Where are we filming this at? These are our new digs. This is our new digs. Look at it. Look at the wide cam, Frenchie. Welcome to our new abode. Where, welcome, welcome. This is the new YouTube studio where I am now filming all my videos, but also Frenchie and I have decided to start a second channel. Hasn't started quite yet. This is a little test run right now. We're trying to figure test out run. the kinks. With intent. With intent, a lot of intent. But where are we exactly? We are in the heart of Hell's Kitchen, above my restaurant, and below my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, we're, so basically it's a small brownstone. We are above, are we above the kitchen here? No, the kitchen's over there. We're above the dining room and my apartment's above us right now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we are in Times Square, New York. Also this particular area is known as Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen. Restaurant yeah, Row. Well, Hell's Kitchen was, was a term you use when you like to stay out of. Now it's like, it's been, uh, what's that word we used before? Gentrified. Gentrified. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the other way around because yeah. this used to be the Irish neighborhood, the Irish gangsters neighborhood. So, well, no, West Side Story. So yeah, it was the Irish yeah. and, uh, yeah, yeah. And, the, and, the, and like Spanish, right? Yeah. Puerto Ricans? Is that what? I think it's a Puerto West Ricans. Side Story yeah. was Puerto Ricans and the Irish or it something? It could be wrong. Or I don't remember. We could be having some very angry comments going down <laughs> right now. Like, how could you not know? Yeah. Pretty sure it's Puerto Rican. I think because we're not big musical fans. Uh, well, speak for yourself. Hmm. Oh, musicals, musicals. Musicals. Yes. Oh, musicals, okay. All right, well, so yes, we are coming to you from Times Square, New York. Very glad to be here. Lots of exciting things we plan to do. We eventually will be doing cooking videos. We'll eventually start having guests. We have lots of plans, but until we launch the new channel, we're just- Yeah, but just be just, patient with us because yeah. we're trying to, we're really trying to get our shit together. Yeah, and, and we want to do it right. So this yeah. is testing grounds for us. And plus you can get, you can get us on my channel, on my main channel, on Pro Chef Reacts. Frenchie is not going anywhere. This is just an extension of that. We are. Well, the whole point of this is I, I don't want to go anywhere. I got lazy commuting <laughs> to your place. And I was like, hey, you know what, Brian? Why don't we do this at my place? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, it's a lot bigger, too. It's a lot bigger. Yeah. I got this table donated by a, a really good friend. So this table alone is em has emotional value. Um, slowly but surely, we'll, we'll, we'll have more emotional, you know, meaning surrounding us. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think this is a good time to talk about that we want to decorate this yes. room with some art. And now I have some of my art I brought over, but we want some fan art. And Frenchie, if you don't mind, can you grab the t-shirts? Frenchie is, has been so kind, he's going to donate t-shirts to this little... So this is the first... Of many yeah, t-shirts. Show the wide cam. Show the there wide the cam. Wide cam. Yeah. So this is what I use at um, the competitions. It's the French onion soup burger. The Fosby. <laughs> 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 so guys, we want you all to send us some fan art and send it to Le Ravage. We're gonna put it in the description below. Mail it over to us. Make sure there's a return address because the first what do you want to do? Dozen? Yeah. All right. First dozen. Dozen? For no, let's do decimals. I like decimals. Decimals? What do yeah, you mean? Yeah, 10, every 10. 10. Oh, okay, 10. You want to do 10. All right. The oh, no, does that sound cheap now? It does sound okay, cheap. Okay, so every dozen now. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I just like 10s, increments of 10. Okay, next time. Next okay. giveaway. All right, for this let's giveaway. Let's get on board with the metric system, okay? <laughs> I, I'm Asian. We use metric. Anyway, for the first 12 people who send us fan art, make sure you put a return address and we will send you out a shirt. When you send your fan art, put a piece of paper, your t-shirt size that you would like us to send, yeah. all right? So that we can make sure you get your right size, all right? We wanna decorate this room with fan art. You guys have been Don't so Don't make good. me fat. <laughs> Do not make me fat. I have 
issues as it is. So uh, <laughs> we want to get this room decorated by you wonderful people. You, you guys have fallen in love with Frenchie. You guys know why I love Frenchie so much and have been so good to us on my main channel. So we want to decorate it with what you have to offer, All right? Appreciate you. Um, Frenchie, let's get into the first topic. So that's, that's gonna be our show, topics? Uh, I don't know. We're still working out the kinks, We're but out I've picked kinks. out some topics of some things I wanted okay, to talk shoot. about. First thing I wanna talk about is the current state of New York restaurants. And I think in many ways it, 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 it can, a lot of people New can York relate. New York City restaurants. New let's, York City, okay. New York. Let's be more specific, New York okay. City restaurants. New York City meaning five boroughs. Okay, I am more affected by Manhattan, right? right. So I know my niche, right? You know, I, I do have a restaurant upstate and I'm working on Jersey and everything's like that, but you know, my core, my life is over here, right? So my greatest effect, my morale and my business is here. So let's focus on Bridge and Tunnel then. I, I'm fucking, my restaurant's in Brooklyn. We can't talk about me a little. It can't just be about Frenchie all the time. You're the one that said it at the beginning of the video. I'm Brian's sidekick. All the meanwhile, <laughs> he fucking takes over the whole shit. He makes me move in with him. <laughs> it's like, baby, baby, I'm tired of going to you. Just stay with me. <laughs> oh, it's basically, oh, why, why do we have two places? Just move in. <laughs> Like, I don't want to commute. Like, well, it's, it would be so much easier. Oh my God, I've literally done that to all my me. I just did it to you. Cheers, bro. Oh, fuck. Yeah. yeah no, let's see. Oh, no. God. All right, listen. Okay, bitch, I'm not coming across. I'm not taking no bridge and no tunnel. No. Let's talk about the New York, the current state of New York restaurants as it pertains to us. How about that? Listen, uh, we've. Oh, all my friends in the business, we. We're obviously talking about it, and we're seeing a you know we're seeing a difference. We had that surge, mm -hmm. right? Yes. When, when we were allowed to go out, everybody went. It was bananas. It was bananas, it was right? Bananas. And uh, nobody can, could complain. Can, can you go a little closer to the mic, please? No. Oh. Just, just, just bring your chair a little closer. You. Well, I we can't. had this issue at my office. Why? Why does it still because happen? Because I get I get comfy. All right. So you were talking with your buddies. I'm talking to my buddy. Um, and basically, there's a trifecta. Trifecta. People realize they spent too much money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's one. Yeah. Two. The throes of summer, right? It's yeah. like full tilt now. It's so like, everyone knows in New York, typically the summer is the slowest period. Even though you have a lot of tourism at that time, a lot of locals leave. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think the amount of tourism compensates for the amount of locals. And number three is the contrast to the locals. All the non-locals, like they, they really think it's not safe to come back. Mm. Like that's all you hear. Like you, you hear like people who are like, they believe the news, they believe every, you know, you know, uh, news, news story that like, it's like, it's the end of the world. It's like, like I said, escape from New York. They think that like New York is like, a war zone. Yeah. Right? I don't know. And I, I, unfortunately, it's like, it's hard to like dismiss everything yeah. that's happening. That's yeah, the no, problem. no, definitely. I mean, it's not the same. It's definitely not as safe as it used to be. I don't think it's nearly as bad as people make it out to be or the news makes it out to be. But the feeling, what I'm sensing as to add to what you said on that last point is I think people, at least from what I'm observing from my group of friends, are traveling a bit more grand and a bit more exotic you know or they're like a lot of my friends are asian is there and a lot how, of them how do you how do you travel better than first class no meaning like you know rather than going to like texas <laughs> oh, you or totally California. missed that one <laughs> I totally, I totally missed it. uh too late now <laughs> bong anyway i'm seeing i'm feeling like when i look at my friends instagram pages they're going to like italy and or they're going back to their home country malaysia and hong kong Shh. or taiwan Listen, i just i just i just did you the just same, got back I just, did, I just did the same thing yeah. i hate to say it but i kind of invested in my house in france you know mm -hmm. my house in france that sounds so pretentious <laughs> so my dad recently passed away for, and it's like a, it's a family house it's yeah. been in the family for Literal, literally hundreds of years. Like the house is close to 500 years old. And I promised my dad that while he was alive, that you know he wanted to keep it like he rest kept, in peace, by the way. Yeah, he wanted to keep it like the way it was. He wanted to keep his core memories alive. Like he wanted to be able to go into a room and remember his parents, his mom, mm -hmm. his dad, his brothers. He wanted to like, and he said, "Don't touch the house till I pass away." And I literally, he passed away, 
and it was important to him. I don't think I just came in and just like did my thing. It was important for my dad that I made changes to the house that were important enough that, that my generation that I created, my kids, mm -hmm. will come and want to spend there. Right. So I made, I added some, you know, some... Uh... AC? <laughs> no, you don't need AC there. Really? No, man. No? It was like, even with, with the heat wave, those, yeah. the walls in that house are like uh, over a meter and a half thick. Oh, okay. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's, yeah. it's medieval. Right, right. I, I went to France for the first time last year. The house is house fucking like medieval. Yeah. And we're high up in the mountains. We're in the Pyrenees Mountains. I'm like, oh, okay. you know, I jump skip away to... Uh, well, I'm going with you next time. Dude, we can next time you want to go, yeah. we can use it as a, a food. Uh, oh, come on. yes. Listen, then, then you'll see the then you'll understand my food here yeah. because I've acclimated the background of where that specific region where I come in to the, the French recipes that are generalized. Right. You know, so I made it. You know, those those flavors are very specific. You then you'll notice that like I'm not a, as original as you think. If we go to France, <laughs> to my right, where right. I come from specifically, right, right. you're like, hey, wait a second, this, this tastes like Paul's food. Yeah. We're veering far off from the original topic. You know, we're talking about the state of the current state of New York restaurants. It sucks. It's rough. It's rough. It's definitely rough right now. Rough. It's definitely rough. Yeah. So when uh, Paul's situation is a little different from mine. Paul has multi general generate. Uh, his restaurant is multi generations. Also. Uh, he's far more established than I am. I just opened up technically my second restaurant. I'm old. He's old. He's much <laughs> older than me. And I opened up my second restaurant or, you know, my first restaurant went out of business. I opened my restaurant literally right after the post-COVID era. And it's a completely different concept for, for what you do. But yes, I agree. Post-COVID era, all restrictions were lifted. It was bananas. People bananas. were spending money. They were partying. They were having a good time. And then school opened. And right away, everyone was like, oh, shit. Timmy, shit. Timmy needs a book bag. Timmy needs some new sneakers. So let me not let me uh, not go eat out to eat as much. Because usually, that's one of the first things that gets cut, cut out. Because eating out is technically a luxury. Eating out is a luxury. Yeah, it is a luxury. But now, like, you have... There are people who are weighing some fast casual options with actually buying groceries. I heard somewhere that it was actually, you know you could go to like um, Chains, Chipotle and things like that and order- um, Like a meal kit? Like a meal kit. Mm -hmm. And if you order enough of it, you have it for the whole week mm -hmm. and it ends up being cheaper. It's like catering, like you know when, like, when restaurant industries or fast casual order catering, mm -hmm. Then you get big batches. It's not mixed up. It's not prepared. Right. So you can store that separately, and you can make, if you have the right, right, you know, idea, you can make a billion meals out of those. And it ends up being a little bit cheaper because it's all prepped for you, and basically you're just mixing and matching. And there, there's the volume. You know exactly what you're, who you're serving, how many people you're serving, and stuff like that. So there's a bit more predictability out of it. Uh, that makes it easier for a restaurant operator. But people, as... these are not small glasses. We have huge hands. <laughs> <laughs> so, current state of restaurants, post COVID era. Right now, I feel like things are starting to normalize a little bit, but it is it is rough right now. It is rough. It, it is Listen, rough. but we're in the middle of summer. Yeah, we're in the middle of. Can't even catch a break with the weather. Have you noticed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a uh, like a couple months where it was basically raining Rain. every weekend. It rained Friday, Saturday, yeah, Sunday. Sunday. It was. It what just, the fuck? And restaurants all the make, best days. Yeah, restaurants make their money. Friday, Saturday, Friday, Sunday. Saturday, Sunday. So like my shop. I mean, every, not just my shop. Every place felt it. It, it was. It was particularly rough. Um, I forgot the Korean code of where I have to serve you first and you have to serve me. Yes, yes, and, I have to, and I'm supposed to hold with two hands. It's okay. Enough That's right. we're in Enough a, We're in a French house now. We don't yeah, we, we're in my house. <laughs> you made me move in with you. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, cheers again, because we yeah, didn't yeah. do that on camera. Yes, cheers. Love you, brother. Love you. Yeah. So, right now it's slow. The summer is typically always slow. But where do you see the restaurant industry going from here? At least, at least for, for, for us in New York City. For us or in general? Because that's really two It's two different questions. Let, let, let's so do both. For us, let's do both. So for, for me, there's a, there's a lag time and we, just, and we need to catch up to mm -hmm. it. 
and the city's gonna come back. That's mm-hmm. not an issue. It's going to come back. There's people have too much invested in the city for it. It's too big to fail. Right. Where have we heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, New York City is the comeback kid. It always has been. When the city went bankrupt and we were told to go fuck ourselves from Washington, we, we, we came back. Yeah. And that situation was 10 times worse than it is now. Yeah. It was dire. Like, the city was abandoned. It was, it was like politics was amok. We're, talk, was we're talking... Uh, the 70s. The 70s, yeah. early 80s, right? Exactly. Well, you know, Koch and then... Yeah. Koch and before. Was it Dinkin after Koch? No, it was Giuliani. No, no, Ju- no, no, no. Dinkin was before Giuliani. Mayor. No. We're talking about the mayor. No, 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 no. Dinkin's is after Giuliani. No, it was Dinkin, Giuliani, and Bloomberg. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I only know this very well because Dinkin's went to my dad's repair shop since he was the oh, first right. place to have natural gas. My dad's an auto mechanic and uh, he, he operated gas stations as well. So I oh, remember shit. that very you're clearly. You're right. No, you're yeah. right. You're right. You're right. But yeah, New York wasn't great under Dinkins either. <laughs> Koch fucked it up and Dinkins, Dinkins just held up the status quo. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, general restaurants in general, I think everyone in the world is feeling it, you know, again, with inflation, um, gas prices, all this stuff. And, and, you know, now we're in the post COVID era, there's no more uh, unemployment, you know, there's no more free money going around. Uh, so uh, eating out is a luxury and it's going to be one of the first yeah. things that gets cut. People, out. people are like on the last breath, yeah. like the last whispers of the PPP money. Mm-hmm. Like if they still have it, it's, it's, that's it. It's, it's vapors. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now Realization is setting in is like, oh shit, we have no more aid. Now we have to like, okay, what do we do now? Because the PPP has been draining instead of just maintaining it. Like technically, if you're doing well, you should have maintained and and still have that security. You're you're spending your PPP money, but you're building up your coffers, right? right? And you should, but I'm telling you, as someone who's in a better place than most, it's still not good enough. Yeah, yeah, and for me, uh, when we first opened, again, right after the post-COVID era, business was fantastic. Once September hit came around, business dropped by 30%. I mean, and, and do you remember the next hit where it went down? Uh, for me, it was in April. And what's April? Tax season. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's what's, no surprise. Yeah, Come no on. No surprise at all. It's so money, you money, felt money, it too. money. You felt it too. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I felt it right away. Of course. Away. We feel, right away, I was like, he was like, wait. How much taxes do we have to pay? Yep. Okay, we're not going out. We're not right. doing anything. Right. We're staying yep. home yep. every year. Yep. And then I think it was what May mm-hmm. or June. Every weekend, I think we touched upon it already. Every weekend, it was fucking raining. Yep. And that's when we make all our money. It's it's tough, and I think this resonates with the current situation with restaurants across the world because you know, I mean, inflation and the effects of COVID and supply chain issues is hurting everybody. Really. If you go to Dubai, are they hurting? Oh, all right, all right. All right. Huh? I guess I guess they get a pass. Okay, <laughs> but I don't think they're hurting. The atmosphere in New York has certainly changed. You know, there was this whole exodus of people leaving the cities. I think there's still a little bit of that residual feeling of I don't want to be in the big city. I want a quieter life. I want more space and stuff like that. And that segues into the next thing I wanted to talk about. This dude named Louis Rosman, who used to operate a computer repair service actually here in New York City. And uh, he just kind of got tired of the bureaucracy, all the taxes, all this and that, and decided to move to Texas, move his operations to Texas. Texas, baby. Texas. Uh, Texas is where it's at. Hey, can we Oh, do, you can know we... who reached out to me today? Who? Chef G, the hibachi guy. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's coming to New York in January. And I, oh. t- I let him know that. I'm here now. I moved in with you. <laughs> I let him know I moved in with you. I was like, okay, keep that you. on the down low. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, Louis Rosman, uh, he mainly covers a, a big part of his channel is something called right to repair. It's something I'm very interested in because my father's an auto mechanic. And as we know, over the last, particularly, I would say the last 10 years, the art of repair seems to be dying. Number one, because a lot of people don't want to seem to work those jobs anymore but number two it's also because a lot of companies want to keep all that in-house for them Mm -hmm. right i mean they make more money yeah in the in you coming back to them right 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 so it's like oh yeah you want that laptop repaired it's going to cost a thousand dollars well you might as well just buy a new exactly right Um, i mean you could buy you buy a new car and you open the hood you can't fit your finger. You can't yeah, do, yeah, you can't. You're, right. you're in charge of windshield wiper yeah. fluid, oil, and 
even the battery now is hard to get yeah. to get to you know like they want you to call for the battery now almost yeah. Yeah. i'm like so lewis's channel mainly i'm a big fan of his channel I, I i agree with a lot of what he says i like what he's doing as far as pushing the right to repair but he put out a video he put out a very interesting video talking about why tipping sucks and i i have a few opinions about this but i'm also very curious about your opinion so let's watch well it. i'm all across the board um tipping yeah. Let, let's watch let's start the video first and i want to hear your take on it all right just let me know when you want want me to pause you ready okay hey everybody how's it going hope you're having a lovely day recently on this channel i did a video on tipping a doordash driver had lost his crap after getting a zero dollar tip and i tried to discuss what i think of tipping pause his, his voice should be on at midnight when i want to go to sleep he's that he's that he's that he's that radio station when i was a kid like they're like Okay, now, and here we go, folks. We're going to the Betty Bye now. Okay, go ahead. Right. And today we're going to be talking about this post that I saw that is sent to me via email that is just absolutely out of this world and uh, give you some thoughts. This comes from Maxine's. If you cannot afford to tip my waitstaff, do not. I repeat, do not come here and dine with us. I know damn well it is not because of the service that they provide. They are stellar. Read the reviews. They are not working here as volunteers. They need to pay their bills, keep a roof over their head, feed their fur babies, gas their cars, whatever it may be, irrelevant. Just like you show up for work and get paid, so should they. Unfortunately, they rely on the generosity of you bums to make their money. Again, if you are too cheap to tip your server here or anywhere else, don't go out to eat. In the words of Fergie, so if you ain't got no money, take your broke ass home. Wait a second, is this a restaurant owner? Yeah. Calling her customers bums? Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, I, good luck on I, that. Yeah, I definitely don't agree with that, but there are certain. Let, let let's keep watching. Okay. Yeah. Or do you have anything you want to add to this yet? No, let's 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 do. It. Okay. Why am I watch looking at the camera now? You see, you're sacrificing my field of vision for your beauty. Gosh, I'm sorry. We're still aesthetics. working out the kinks. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll get monitors back here. Okay. Okay. Okie dokie, Smokey. Where do we even fucking begin? They are not working here as volunteers. Apparently they are because you don't pay them, you piece of shit. If you're a business owner, oh my God, maybe I'm salty. Tell me if I'm being salty. I work in an industry, I'm so, like, I work in an industry where I'm actually expected to pay people. I know that that's crazy, but I'm expected to pay my employees, not you. And to be clear, I understand that at every single business in the United States, the customers pay the employees. The business owner is simply the middleman facilitating that transaction and creating an environment and providing the tools and the education and the workspace and everything that allows this to occur. But at the end of the day, when I post a price, this will repair will cost $200. You give me $200. I do the repair. Your responsibility as a customer is over. Why do you have to pay me more money than the price that I told you something is so that my employees can get paid? If I'm billing you $200 for a repair, is it not implied that my employees are being paid out of that $200 that you gave me? Pause. And There's a guy, you paid 200, he paid you $200 to do the repair, right? And you repaired it. What if the guy goes that extra step and like cleans your screen, gets the dings out of it, packages it up nice and, and like, right. or doesn't? Right. That's where the tip comes in. Right. Like, listen, there's, there's a, oh my God, there's, there's so much, to there's unpack. so much to cover. There's so much to unpack with this. Yeah. Topic. I mean, you got, you got to unpack the logistics of like American tipping and the rest of the world tipping, European tipping and all that stuff yeah. there where it's, it doesn't exist. Yeah. There's no tipping in most of the world because you are qualified to do that job. Mm -hmm. You've have stepped that up. That is your job. And you've leveled right. up, you know? Like people look at what, over here, unfortunately, people look at waiters and and servers and everything as like menial jobs. You go any, when you go to France, a waiter is a fucking respectable job that you had to level up to and that you had to earn. Right. And you get paid properly. Yeah. Like, over here, like anybody can just be like come in and like they can bullshit about being a servant and just try and become a waiter. Right. You know, what's that famous scene from Reservoir Dogs? Tip oh yeah, waitress? yeah, yeah. Uh, John Buscemi, I think. Yeah, Steve yeah, Buscemi. Steve Buscemi, sorry. He's like, no, she's paid. He's like, yeah. no, but she's providing a service. Like that. That's how she makes. Right. That's how that conversation starts. Where it was like he doesn't understand that like there are levels of that. You know. Right. And yeah, some people like didn't get an education, anything like that is like, like that's what they can do. Right. That job all across the board in the restaurant is not the same. You can't compare, you know, diner service, right. Applebee's, 
a restaurant, fine dining, that's you you're leveling right, up. Right, right, right. And then and I know a lot of servers who like if you tell, oh, we're gonna pay you a salary, it's like, no, it's like he's not gonna go, uh, no, I wanna earn my tips because right. I my potential yeah, is I mean, so much more. There were some restaurants that did try to implement no tipping and oh. they all reversed on it. And, and, uh, well, and I, Danny Meyer? Yeah, Danny Meyer. <laughs> Ultimately. Should we not use his name? Did that get us? No, nah, it's totally fine. <laughs> the tipping system is, the, is one of the ultimate forms of meritocracy, right? Based right. on what, how you work and the extra effort you put in, you can potentially, not always guaranteed, but you can potentially make more money because of the outstanding service that you provided. I wanted to go back to what you said earlier you said, okay, I repair a laptop, it's $200, but now I take the time to wipe the screen, clean it out, maybe do some extra stuff, whatever yeah. extra stuff is, right? Does that, that warrant it... a tip or does that warrant just excellent service to try to get the customer to come At the very least, back? it guarantees you repeat business. Well, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I said, right? Like it at least guarantees repeat business. But there's so much to unpack here because I think most people watching this would agree, at least people who work as servers in the States, they want to keep the tips. Yes. They want those tips, especially the good servers yeah. who know what the fuck they're doing, who almost treat it as like an art form because it is almost like a ballet dance. A good server who know, like who predicts your move, predicts your moves, takes that extra step and is graceful around the table. People notice oh, and yeah. those guys make well over six figures, easily. <laughs> Sometimes easily. it's the way that you don't even notice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like if you have to notice service, yeah. they're not doing it right already. So right now we're talking about it mainly. I feel from a restaurant tour perspective. Let's talk oh, by about. By the way, it from I'm the one paying for AC. So can you turn it on? You don't have to be. You don't <laughs> no, have to I be. Didn't turn it off. I didn't turn it on. No. No. It's definitely. How is it not? There you go, baby. Okay, okay, all right, gosh. I'm gonna... paying for the AC. I'm doing the technical shit for the fucking podcast. <laughs> I guess the AC... You're the one that made me want to move in with you. I guess the AC's too technical <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give me the fucking remote? God damn, God you take damn it. Fucking Holy remote. shit. I already regret. It says cool. Just push cool. I already, I already regret moving in with you. <laughs> I'm gonna break up. <laughs> I feel we've been talking about it mainly from a restaurateur perspective. Let's talk about it from a customer perspective and okay. what this guy posted. You know, I mean, I think that was over the top. But I, it's I, still, we're still looking at it at a known no perspective because like we want to offer the customer the best choice. Yeah. Okay, so someone who doesn't know about the inner workings of a restaurant, like, like okay, so um, how much is your waiter's time worth an hour? You tell me, so, right. is it, is it, $15 an hour, which is like what close to minimum wage right. now, yes. which is pretty good actually. Yep. Is it 20? Is it 25? Right. Is it 30? What right. is it? And what happens? Let's put it to a vote. What right. is it? Yeah. And it's hard to say. And right? then, okay, so what are you going to say? Um, if you're going to say $30 an hour, I know a lot of ways are going to like, fuck that. Yeah. You yeah. know, I can make $30 on one customer. When a customer comes in, at least in the States, you know, they're, they already know that they need to tip. It's it's so ingrained into the fabric of our culture. And unlike French people who come in like, oh, tipping, oh, what, what is this tipping? Uh, we, we are supposed to tip, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but what happens if you eliminate tipping is the food's gonna, the price that you're gonna pay is going to go up because as le at least in the States, that's what the system is built upon. Right. So, you know, I, I agree with him in many ways. In 99% of the industries, it's not based on, you, you don't get paid I don't, based on tips. I don't agree but, with like the tipping at fucking Starbucks and right. this and like, no, they should pay good wages yeah. because they're providing the exact same service no matter what. Right. Unless they befriended someone who comes in early and they get to skip the line or something. Yeah. Okay, a little, 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 little extra tip there, you know what I mean? Yeah. But in a restaurant where you don't know the outcome of your meal yet because of this server. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. I guess with something, you know, something like the food business, it's so subjective, right? Because if something's like my dad always says, he's, he's a mechanic. He always says a, a nut goes onto a bolt only one way. It goes mm -hmm. in, it goes out one way. So when you righty tighty, lefty loosey, right, generally, if you repair something, you it, like that, it right? Needs, needs Why'd to be, you not comment on my, 
I'm trying to make up because you baby. because you can't remember it. I can't remember. You're gonna lose it. your train if of I, thought. If I, if I don't I'm interrupting it. you. I, yes, so you are. You're getting upset. Now, stop. like, oh, what were we talking about now, Brian? Uh, did you forget what we were talking no, about? No, I didn't fucking forget. <laughs> I'm talking about if you repair something, there's only one way to repair it, right? To get uh -huh. it right, like they want it fixed a certain way. It's but called when, math. It's called math. Exactly, right? There, one plus one only will only equal two. When it comes to food and service, it is subjective. It's based on you know, the customer is going to judge it as an overall experience that has so many variables. And a big part of that variable is the server. And then that server gets re rewarded with a tip. What a lot of people don't know is that by law, if a server does not make enough tips to at least hit the minimum wage. We have to compensate. We have to compensate to make sure they hit minimum wage. Yep. So I believe server minimum wage right now is $10 an hour. No, it's no, more than that. It's more than I that? think we're, 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 we're gonna go, oh shit, I don't wanna be quoted on this, but it's gonna go up to like 18 or something like that. No, 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 server minimum wage, tipped employee minimum wage. So right oh, now- Don't quote me right now. Okay. Minimum wage in New York City right now is $15 an hour. I could be mistaken, but I believed tipped employee minimum wage is $10 yes. an hour, right? And then whatever your tips come out to be, whether it's you end up walking away $18 an hour or $50 an hour, the restaurant doesn't have to pay you any more than $10 an hour. But what's gonna hour. happen is like, as the restaurant owners are gonna end up paying the minimum wage, which is gonna be what most people make yeah. at, at, at other jobs, and, and, the, and the server is still gonna make tips. Yeah. They're still gonna make tips yeah. on top of that. Yeah. And if you're really good, some people don't care how much they spend on their meal. They're gonna drop a, a bill, their Benjamin, on a good waiter. Yeah. Just because they're celebrating, they're happy, they're in a good mood, they're imbibed. Yeah. And they're gonna like, here, here's a fucking hundred. Let's keep watching. Why can't I just charge you $210? $220, $300 for that repair so that there's actually month left over to pay the employee. When a customer comes to a business and the business says we would like $20 for this and the customer gives $20 and the business gives the customer what they pay $20 for, that is the end of the transaction. The fact that we live in a world where if a business says I want $20 for what I'm offering and you give them $20 that you the customer or the asshole is insane. But the lack of self-awareness in this post just kills me. They need to pay their bills. They are not working here as volunteers. He doesn't understand that you're providing a service that's black and white. There's a beginning. It, it's, right. it's, it's very like a meal is an art form. It's, it's, it's subjective. It could, it could go any direction. Yep. And the person in charge of that, of your meal, is that waiter. The maitre d', the waiter, the busboy, you know. And then back at the house, you know, you got... They're the like, back of the house is actually providing a product. Is that's providing supposed, his service. Right, exactly. The back of the house is providing his service. Right. It's the same, 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 right. same, same. Or that's the goal. Uh, we should, we should yeah, specify that's, that's the, the goal. goal. The goal of back of the house when they... Some of you have given me grief when I would say we're making a product. It's because that's what we are. Yeah. And the goal for back of the house is to make a product consistently. Consistently. And that's the fucking hard it's like part. it's like yeah. like in like back at the house is not going okay this guy's getting this version of this right. this version of that play no it's the same version every single time or it should be it should be front of house needs to adapt you they can need have an to ass adapt that's the right an, word they, they have to like an asshole customer comes in or a good customer comes in it changes everything there's yeah. so many dynamics yeah. so oh. many variables a lot of dynamics and you know what Sometimes a good server can turn a shitty customer into a great customer just and, because of how graceful they were. And, and I and, will go with the rule I tell them every, if not every day, at least once a week. I tell my staff a good waiter can save a bad meal. Yes. A yep. good meal can't save bad service. Yep. Yes. And that percent. alone, yeah. that alone is going to explain it to this guy. Yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. I That's do want it. I do want to hear again the no, rest no, no, of No, no, no. We don't need to hear him anymore. I'm done. Come on. Come I'm on. over it. It's we're halfway He's in a barca lounger. <laughs> He's too comfy. He's got that baby blue t-shirt. He's got the soft sultry voice. That's yeah, putting me soft. to sleep. He couldn't take New York. He had to run away to Texas. Oh no. I said it. I I, I was going with his pluses and you just buried him. <laughs> Okay. Let's keep. I want to. You're, I want to watch you're the bad guy. I thought I was the bad guy. No, I th no. What? 
what are you talking about? Actually, yeah, I think I think people view you as the asshole, and I'm like the reasonable one. Really? Yeah. Oh. No, people find you to be a hilarious asshole. Let's just specify <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, Frenchie's using my dick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my uh, buddy Cosmos got me this. Yes, his name is Cosmos. Cosmo Kramer. Yes. Thank you, thank you. All right. I agree they should get paid for showing up for work. So All right, you know what? You're right. Let's stop watching this. He, he, he just sounds salty for the yeah, rest of it. And he's just... He is coming from it from a different Listen, industry. That, from the mentality of a different what industry. What I just told you. Like like I said, like a bad meal, good service. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's the math. Yeah. That's the mathemal. That's the math. Mathemal? Mathemal? <laughs> Let shit fall, Frenchie, the animal mathemal. <laughs> There you go. The math- mathematical equation is good service, a good presentation can save a product, and a bad product cannot serve a bad presentation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. End of story. All right. He's saying, why don't you pay them? Well, if you were to flip the model upside down right now, uh, what we're paying, what we pay at a restaurant, is going to go up. up. Ooh, and I am pretty sure you're not going to be happy about that. <laughs> I am pretty sure most of you would rather go with the tipping system and have the choice of how much you tip. Exactly. Versus, oh, every single time this once $20 entree is now $50. Because that's what it's going to be. Because that's what it's going to be. That's what it's going to be. I, I, I don't think people realize how slim the margins are on food. For, on food. It is razor, razor thin. And, and sometimes it's even more than that. Like how many times do I, do I have what I call eye candy on my menu? Yeah. I have attractive choices on the menu that, are, that cost me more and yeah. I lose money on, but I need to get that customer yes. because yes. customers that, people that are joining him are gonna get cheaper stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's called eye candy. Yeah, you make it back on the salad. You know, you make it back on the yeah. beer, right? So like, you have the husband, oh, look at me going old school, right, where hell yeah. the husband is taking the steak and the, the woman's getting the salad. I'm making money in the salad. Right. I ain't making money on the steak. Right. I can't tell my employees you guys are getting two bucks an hour. Work it out with the customers. That would, like, that would result in a revolt. Everybody who okay, now he sounds quit, ignorant. The customers yeah. would be yeah. he, he just, he doesn't know. It's a different industry. Yeah, it's a different industry. I, and guys, I want you all to know, I highly, highly respect this dude. As far as his views on right to repair, right, thousand percent with him. But he's he just, just is not. He's, he, stay in your lane. Yeah, stay in your lane. Okay. <laughs> Do we have, did we have enough of this? Yeah, we have enough uh, of we this. We had enough of this. All right, cool, cool. All right, guess what? What? Our season. So Frenchie and I were both on season one of Beat Bobby Flay. And that season, or Beat Bobby Flay, is now available. Wait, season one? Yeah. We were, in, we were the first season we're of that show? We were the first season, yes. I mean- <laughs> Jesus Christ, That's how much, even back then, I wasn't hip to like fucking. Okay, all right. I'm, I'm going to tell the story of how Frenchie and I met. We've definitely touched upon it. But our season I didn't one- even know I was on the show when you came up to me. I was like, I was like what, what are you talking be- Oh, okay. So uh, Beat Bobby Flay is now on Max. Once known as HBO Max, it's uh, at <laughs> least in the States. I don't know about the rest of the world, but if you're in the States, you want to watch Frenchie and I's episodes of Beat Bobby Flay and you have Max, you can watch it now. I thought that was a little cool thing. I know the name of my episode. Yeah, what's the name of your episode? Instead of Beauty and the Beast, it's Beauty and the Feast. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> my episode was called The Terror of Taco Town. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, mine's better. Fuck you. It's more memorable. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, at least I won my episode. Oh, didn't you win the season? Uh, I thought I won the season, but people have been telling me the pilot episode, which counts as the first season, that person won. It doesn't matter. It's all rigged. Yeah. <laughs> It's all right. So Frenchie, not your episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Frenchie and I, we met at a James Beard party at uh, the Todd English. Todd English movie. when he opened up yeah. at the Plaza, right? Yes. Yeah, at the Plaza. And uh, I remember I was I was by the end. So the Plaza food hall is in the basement. So you take this escalator down. And yeah, but the basement is. The, is a city block. Fucking city block. <laughs> it's massive. I was by that escalator and I was just hanging out with my wife, now uh, my then girlfriend, now wife, and I see Frenchie coming down and I recognize- Like Trump coming down that gold escalator. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
the, the, the clouds parted and I came down. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was like, oh, th it's this asshole because your episode, I remember watching your episode. I was like, who the fuck is this asshole? Arrogant. Like, arrogant asshole. He was like, yeah, my burger blend is perfect, which it kind of is. It, it is. <laughs> it kind of is. It but is. <laughs> I just remember, like, who's this arrogant asshole? But I remember the first round, which you have to go up against another chef, right, with a secret ingredient that Bobby chooses. He finished early and he fucking darts over to the to the other contestants uh, side. Help? Oh, I went to help her. Yeah, yeah. And you were like, do you need some help? <laughs> and I was just like, who is this piece of shit? And I remember him come. I remember Frenchie coming down the stairs and I was just like, I'm going to go say hi. <laughs> and that was it. And we just kept in touch uh, since then. And it was love at first it sight. Was love at first sight. And now I moved in. <laughs> Oh my God! But uh, yeah, that's how Frenchie and I met. It was just at a chef's party, a James Beard Fest chef's party, and uh, I was I was young and skinny. Yes, so was I. I was I was thinner then too. Oh, but uh, who? Um, cat, wa watch us on uh, Beat Bobby Flay available now yes. on Max. No, yeah. we, we don't get any royalties from that. Fuck that shit. <laughs> No. <laughs> no audience. Well, actually, when I reacted to as a 100K special, when right. my channel hit 100K, uh, I was supposed to, well, I did react to my episode of Beat Bobby Flay. They fucking demonetized that shit. Someone at Food Network keeps demonetizing it. So now it's only a bit like I had to put that. I had to take that episode down and put it on my Patreon. No paywall, by the way. So if oh, you guys dude. want to watch it, we should react. We to should react record. to mine. Oh my god! <laughs> I actually I was an asshole. I, I, I rewatched your episode. It was pretty fun. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. My fun. my kids love it because they like to they like to tease me about it, and I was like, like every time. Did, did like, you do Chopped? Did I do? Do you remember? <laughs> I no. no no no. The only reason I did. Um, beat Bobby Flay is because I was, you know, we were hanging out and then we were at Burger Bash and he was like, and I won Burger Bash. And he's like, oh, you got to come on, you got to bring the burger on my show and you got to, you oh, know. Okay. But I know him a little bit, you know, you know through La Frida and yeah, all my, yeah. like, it's, it's not like, I was like, yeah, okay. It's yeah. like, you know, I'll come on the show and everything like that. And it was just. Which you judge now, right? You judge Burger Bash now? Or you did after you won? No, I've been competing up to until now. Oh, you're still competing? Yeah. Oh, okay, so, so. Paul no, this is, this year I'm not competing. I'm doing the, I'm doing the French brunch. Oh, okay. So Paul is talking about the South Beach. Uh, no, the New York Food and Wine Festival. New York Food and Wine. I don't do. What's his name? Took I thought you did South Beach. No. Oh. What's his name? Paul Simon? Mm hmm took my Michael the Simon? year Michael Simon the yeah. year that I did the French onion right. soup burger and won he did it at South Beach right after me and and won no shit yeah. really yeah oh, I was like motherfucker fuck. dun 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 <laughs> dun 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 shit and right. I didn't even notice I wouldn't people told me I like like I'm so blase I don't I don't, yeah. I don't pay attention I'm in my own little world all right. That's well well all right then fuck Food Network don't watch it on Max we don't get anything out of it but what you should watch <laughs> is our appearance on Guga's recent video where he talks about about a oh, certain I restaurant. Love I love Guga. By the way, guys, a little sneak peek. We're going. It's We're happening. Going. It's happening. We're going to Miami. <laughs> Oye, como va? If you guys haven't already, go check out Guga's channel. Uh, we were just uh, we were fortunate enough to collab with Guga and the episode was called I found the biggest restaurant scam on dry age steaks and Frenchie and I both give our past experiences of this particular scam check it out it is on YouTube go How's support it doing? Guga uh, it is doing it's almost at a fucking million views and it's only four days just to give you some perspective my video came out for it. My latest video came out for four days ago, and it is currently sitting at uh, 48K views. Hey, wait a second. We need to, wait a second. What? We need to pump up those numbers. The fuck are you talking about? That's still pretty goddamn good. Is it? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm yeah. new to this. Yeah, I know you're new to this. That's why I'm handling all the technical shit. I just need to have fun. As long as you keep the situation where I'm having fun and and we're laughing, that's all I care okay, about. So if I start serving you peas and trying to get a reaction out of you. <laughs> oh man, this was a blast. Frenchie. My um, kryptonite. Frenchie, I am really looking forward to this new channel that we're eventually gonna launch. Until then, you, my audience, our but like, audience. But okay. everybody, be patient, yeah. be patient. It's a, we wanna bring out something good. 
So we're not gonna go. We're gonna we're not gonna throw garbage at you. So yeah, let's yeah, yeah. be patient with us. Yes. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to the So You Want to Get Fat podcast. At least that's the working. <laughs> that's the that's, that's that was my that effort. was all that was all Frenchy. I'll give you actually that much. It was it was Blondie. Oh, it was Blondie. <laughs> Blondie is his wife. So you want to get fat? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we will definitely have more as we refine this show. Uh, until then, it will continue to be put out on Chef Brian Sal Raw. And uh, until the next episode, we will see you later. I am Chef Brian Sal, not your typical chef. Frenchie Paul the Animal. We'll see you guys really soon.